Let's pray. Lord God, as we come before your word this morning, guide us, still our minds, open our hearts to your love, to your grace, to your mercy, to the love that you have for us in Christ Jesus. This I pray in his name, amen. So at Joy Church here, we're coming up on a season of a lot of act activity between now and the end of the year. There's Make a Difference Day, there's Spooky Blast, there's Game Night, there's Pastor Shields Bible Study, the Wednesday Bible Study. There's also Operation Christmas Child. There is, uh, of course, then actual Thanksgiving Day, and then there's Advent that's going to come up really fast, and then there's Christmas Eve. Anybody's body start to tense up behind? You know, when I start have to planning Christmas now, it just starts to boggle my mind. So I thought it would be good, before we get into all of this activity, to take a little moment and to remind us of the rest we have in Christ Jesus and the blessing we have in the Sabbath, because the Sabbath really is a blessing of rest. You see, God really did provide for us in many ways, and one of the ways he provided for us is to have rest. And we need to be reminded of that. As a matter of fact, working on this sermon, I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to just preach to me, and if you get benefit out of it, all the better. Because you know me and my schedule, right? I mean, I grew up with a father who worked all the time. For most of his adult life, he had two jobs and six kids. Okay? And so he worked a full time job. Then he started his own business and he had that going until he retired. And then that side business became his full time business. I mean, he was busy all the time. And I kind of grew up like him. Do you remember the song Cats in the Cradle? Yeah, there it says, My child arrived just the other day. He came into the world the usual way, but there were planes to catch and bills to play, pay. He learned to walk while I was away, and he was talking for I knew it, and as he grew, he said, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know, I'm going to be like you. And I became, in many ways, like my dad. Work ethic, work, work, work. The trouble with that, as most of you know, is that it can have a detrimental effect on your life, can't it? It affects your ability to even think sometimes. It certainly affects the emotions. People can go from anywhere from depression to anger, and all of a sudden it just kind of blurts out. It affects your relationships. I mean, it affects your immune system, too, that overwork. The Japanese have this word, by the way, called karoshi, which can be translated literally as overwork death. It also affects your relationship with God. Sometimes you think, I'm too busy to spend time with God, or you're so busy and so overwhelmed, does God even care? He does care. He cares for you greatly, which is why he gave us the blessing of the Sabbath rest. So today, we're going to take a look at three things. The blessing of the Sabbath, what does that actually mean? How the blessing gets twisted, because you and I, we can twist that blessing very easily. And then finally, how to receive the blessing. So we're going to spend some time just on this particular verse. It is from, it's not, uh, I didn't do all, it's not from 2 Timothy, it's from Exodus. When I update slides sometimes, I forget. So this is from our reading from Exodus. It's part of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, we've heard that a lot, right? But there are words in there that we don't even think about so much. There are actually three key words that we need to understand. Remember, Sabbath, and holy. So let's explore these words because there's a very rich meaning behind them. Remember. Now, in other places, other times, I've talked about remember, that word remember. That's just not thinking about something in the past when 
Scripture uses it, it is to bring it into the present with a present effect. There's an aliveness to it. Thus, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's not just a remembrance of something past, but it is a present effect for us here. So when we remember the Sabbath, it is to be alive and present for us. I've used this analogy before, but you know, if you're married and you remember your anniversary, but don't do anything about it, well, you're in trouble, right? And you're going to sleep on the couch. Something like that, right? you got to actually put it into effect. That's what we talk about when we say remembrance, a present effect. Now, this other word, Sabbath, we've, I'm sure you've heard it a lot, but we rarely say what it actually means. Sabbath means stopping or cessation. But in the way it's spelled grammatically, it has a very uh, greater effect to it So we talk about complete cessation of work, to take a break. Now, from our readings, you know, this didn't happen just with the Ten Commandments. The Sabbath actually was at the very end of creation. In the Ten Commandments, it says, For in in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and that all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. So if you want, just go back to Genesis chapter 2, and you can find out that the Sabbath was the very end of creation where God rested. Now, when it says God rested, it's not like he was tired. God can't get tired. There's nothing that God can't do. He can't get worn out. As a matter of fact, the psalm says that he never slumbers or sleeps. So it is not that, but God created things. And remember, on the, on the end of the days, he said, and this was good, and this was good. And when he got done with creation, he rested, and he said, even the rest is good. And so he blessed that day. Now, there's another word, right, associated with Sabbath, bless, but what does that mean? Well, bless or blessing means to show goodness or favor that is bestowed upon another. So God gave his favor to that day of rest in creation. Doesn't that just kind of calm you down, even just thinking about that, right? Believe me, this is a good sermon to work on for me this week. So there is that rest and blessing. But it's also tied to something else. Not only creation, but it's tied to redemption. See, God redeemed the Israelites from slavery, didn't he? As a matter of fact, that's part of the reading of the Ten Commandments regarding the Sabbath. Uh, In the very beginning... It actually says, Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2, And God spoke all of these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. This is reiterated in Deuteronomy. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. See, they were in slavery. And when you were a slave in Egypt, you didn't get a day off. You could work seven days a week. You could work 10, 12-hour days. And don't quote me on this, but what, what stuck in my mind was the life expectancy of a slave in Egypt was around 30 or 35 years old. It was a hard, brutal life. And God redeemed them. He brought them out of slavery and thus gave them rest. And he said, you need this Sabbath rest. So in the Old Testament, there's the Sabbath rest, right? That day. But in the terms of redemption, 
the redemption is finally made complete in Christ Jesus. That in him we are freed from the slave to sin. And we have new life in him. And when we have that new life in him, there is that peace. There is complete peace, isn't there? And thus, because there is complete peace, there is that rest. There's no fear. There's no anxiety. There's no pain. There's no worry. Everything in Christ Jesus is made complete and eternal. And thus, we have our eternal peace, our eternal rest with him. Because that is the ark of redemption. And I couldn't help but think of Don Volz in all of this, right? How much pain he was in, and now he is truly at peace, at rest. And he has that because of the promises in Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. What does that mean? It means that he was there in creation when he said, this is the Sabbath. Wasn't just God the Father, God the Holy Spirit. We believe God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit at the moment of creation rested and declared it blessed and holy. And thus in Christ Jesus, we have our full rest. We have his holiness. Because he is our Sabbath. Jesus is our Sabbath. So let's talk about another word. Holy. What does holy mean? Well, it means to be set apart. And how holy is God? That is his, part of his nature, right? He is truly holy. Complete holiness. Pure What do the angelic beings say around the throne? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And when you take a look at all the attributes of God, it is only holy which is declared three times. And when you declare it three times, it has that full emphasis about it. So to have something be holy is to be set apart. Now, in our day and age, well number of years ago anyway. There were certainly holy days, right? Christmas, Christmas Eve, Christmas. That was a holy day set apart. Easter was a holy day set apart. But over time, as people wane in the faith, as people kind of forget, as they get busy with doing things, it's... Now it's the Christmas holiday, holy day, holiday. And it's not even the Christmas holiday anymore, isn't it? It's just the holiday season, and Santa gets more play often than Jesus. And Easter, well, I don't even think they have the Easter holiday anymore. It's just the spring break. I mean, that's so far how we've come down from actually having something be set apart and holy. So how do we think about having something be set apart and holy? I was thinking about that. And I thought, well, the word hallowed still has some import for us. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been on the beaches of Normandy, but that's hallowed ground, isn't it? Men and women died on that beach, they spilled their blood so that people would be set free. So you go there and there's a sense of holiness or hallowed ground. Some people, when they go through the Civil War battlefields, they understand that. Lincoln understood that at Gettysburg, that that hallowed ground. How do we hallow that? Well, in a like manner, Jesus went to the cross and shed his blood so that we are free. And so the cross is holy. It's hallowed. That's the sense. The sense of that holiness, the hallowedness, that the Sabbath is to have. It's not a a serious grim. It's just 
set apart, completely set apart. It is set aside to be both physically and spiritually renewed. Renewed in our relationship with God. But, but, we like to take blessings from God and just twist them all around. So let's go to our scripture reading from the gospel according to Mark. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So the Pharisees and scribes had a lot of laws, a lot of regulations about many, many different things. There's something called the Talmud, which is a collection of rabbinic writings that come from the oral traditions, the Jewish law, if you will. And within that, there's something called the uh, the Mishnah. And the Mishnah had, well, actually, the Talmud had 24 chapters. 24 chapters on Sabbath. And within the Mishnah, there were 39 categories. Not even just little bits, but categories of what you could or could not do on the Sabbath. Let me just give you a couple examples. For instance, you could walk 1,999 paces and be okay traveling on the Sabbath. But if you took that extra step, 2,000 steps, you are breaking the Sabbath law. Here's some interesting ones. And this is just strange. If you put an olive in your mouth and rejected it because it was bad, you couldn't put a whole one in the next time because the palate had tasted the flavor of the whole olive. Okay, here's another one. If you threw an object in the air and caught it with the other hand, it was a sin. But if you caught it with the same hand, it wasn't a sin. You could not bathe for fear when water fell off you, it might wash the floor. If a candle was lit, you couldn't put it out. But if it wasn't lit, you couldn't light it. Now, like 24 chapters, 39 categories, it got into the minutia, didn't it? Just the minutia. And the Pharisees were trying to get Jesus on two things, two basic categories, which was traveling and reaping. They were taking grain, and they shouldn't be taking grain. What the scribes and the Pharisees did, they took the Sabbath blessing and made it into a burden. This is why Jesus said this, Matthew chapter 11, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Sabbath was never meant to be a burden to people. Now, the Pharisees, the scribes, the rabbis, with the best reading of it, had good intentions of wanting people to actually honor the Sabbath, to keep it holy. But rather, the laws that they created didn't set people free. They bound the people. They ended up making man for the Sabbath. Now, you might think all of that's behind us, right? That's just a long time ago. Well, look, there's a group of people who really want to have the Sabbath law. There's a group of people called the Sabbatarians. No, it's not a political party. Okay. They believe that unless you worship on Saturday, the Sabbath, you are violating God's law. The Sabbatarians would include the Seventh-day Adventists. There's also a group called the Seventh-day Baptists. They believe, in essence, that you would be damned because you are worshiping, that we're worshiping right now on Sunday versus Saturday. Does anybody actually know why we worship on Sunday? Uh, 
Uh, good guess, not quite. We worship on Sunday because this is the Lord's day. He's the Lord of the Sabbath, right? Sunday is the day of his resurrection. It is when the disciples gathered to praise the Lord, to thank him for the full promise of eternal life with him because of his resurrection. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. It is called the Lord's Day. We call it Sunday, but in the, in the New Testament, in Acts, they called it the Lord's Day. So you might think, by the way, okay, well, we're not Sabbatarians and we're doing that. But look, how many of you grew up having Sunday be the law? See, I grew up Roman Catholic. And growing up Roman Catholic, we went to church. And we did holy days of obligation. Now, isn't that an interesting phrase too? Holy days of obligation. It was all about the law. You must go. Now, should we go? Well, yeah. But it became the law. It became oppressive. And I'm going to guess some of you at least grew up like that as well. So the idea of taking the blessing of the Lord's Day, of the Sabbath, and twisting it and making it an obligation of law without any gospel is still very present in our day and age. So, okay, we've discussed what the Sabbath actually is and the blessing of it. And we've talked about how you twist it, but how do you actually receive this particular blessing? Well, let's go to verse 9 from Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male servant, or your female servant, or your livestock, or the sojourner who is within your gates. So it was a time to renew your body. Literally, a time to renew your body. To take a break from all unnecessary work. This means the normal work that you do. Now, taking a break from that work could be computer time. It could be uh, working around the house. It could be all sorts of different things. But you can take a break and do other things that actually renew your body. Now, my office in the back, um, I'm there a lot. And I'm under fluorescent lights most of the day. And for me, actually, to do outside yard work is renewing. I like it. Is it still work? Yeah, but you know what? I get renewed by doing things like that. Sometimes it's just nice to see something accomplished from one part to another, you know? For some people, it could be uh, going out and taking a walk in nature, you know, calming the mind putting away social media and other things like that and just being outside is part of it. For some people, it could be exercise. I mean, that could actually be a way to renew your body. If you're sitting a lot during the week and not getting any exercise, it's a good thing to do. For other people, it could be meeting with friends, right? And enjoying company. That's all of that. As long as it doesn't become another burden, another law. I mean, I know sometimes families have that Sunday meal and it becomes the law and you got to do the meal and it's a lot of work and then it's not really a Sabbath rest, is it? Now, can you do any work at all on the Sabbath? I mean, yeah, actually you can. I mean, there are some people who say you can't do anything. All you can do is sit. Sit in a room, stare, read the Bible maybe. Jesus said this, this from Matthew chapter 12. He went on from there and entered their synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they asked him, is it lawful 
to heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. He said to them, Which one of you has a sheep? If it falls into the pit on the Sabbath, and will not take uh, which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take a hold of it and lift it out? Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out, and it was restored healthy like the other. Doing the work of the Lord on the Sabbath? Yeah. Feeding the hungry, helping the homeless, clothing the poor, the naked. I mean, these are all things you can certainly do on the Sabbath. Okay, but here's the question for you. A lot of stuff what I've described, you could do on any day of the week, right? You really could. So if you're doing that without this next part, you're just taking a day off, okay? If you're doing... What I just described, without doing this next part, it's just a day off. Because remember, we are to remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. So we need to renew, renew your mind and soul in your relationship with God. And so how do we do that? Well, the main way we do that is that we gather an assembly, and that's what church is, an assembly, around his word. Leviticus chapter 23 says, six days work will be done, but on the seventh day, it is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation, a gathering. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwelling places. Acts chapter 13, the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. What makes the day holy? It is God who makes it holy. It is his word that makes it holy. Not our actual just gathering, but it is his word that makes it holy. His word, spoken or preached, sanctifies us. It refills our faith. It strengthens our spirit so we look heavenward. His word cleanses us gives us life. We confess our sins before him and receive what? His forgiveness. A restoration of that relationship. Around the Lord's Supper, we gather and we receive what we most need, which is his grace. This is the grace that is given to us. And then filled with that love, that mercy, that grace that God has given us, we also lift up our voices in song. We're going to sing one of our, my favorites at the very end, How Great Thou Art. Right? That is the praising, the thanking of God for this day. So when we come together and we gather We want to remember, but not just as a ritual, not just as things that we go through, but it is an aliveness where we receive the blessing of the Sabbath rest, which is truly the blessing of Christ Jesus. That's what we do on this very day. And we do it through prayer. We do it through singing. We do it through his word. We do it through the Lord's Supper. And throughout all of that, we receive the blessing of the Sabbath. That's what we do here each and every week. So for you, make sure you take time to renew your body. And that could be stopping things, right? The Sabbath to cease certain things. It could be doing something that simply renews you. But also, make sure that as we gather, and especially in this time of activity, that when we come together, we are renewed in mind, in our soul, in our relationship with God through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And to that, everyone says, Amen. Amen.